that part of Zion, that part of the Jewish people that's still living uh, with the daughter of Babylon, those who did not return from the captivity, he says, he says, uh, separate yourself from them. Uh, he says, flee from them uh, because there is a coming judgment on those people. Uh, God had already prophesied or shown to Zechariah in the previous visions that he was going to uh, bring re vengeance on the heathen, those who had, uh, who had terrorized Israel uh, without purpose or beyond what was uh, allowable. And God's going to bring judgment on these people, those, those four horns that are going to be overthrown by the four carpenters. And he's telling his people, he says, Jerusalem's a safe place because that's my city and that's my people and it's a safe place for you to be. Don't linger with those people who have a coming judgment uh, on them. Uh, it's verse 9, for I will shake my hand upon them and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Uh, God is going to bring judgment on those heathen people. And so he tells his, his, his people, uh, the Jewish nation, flee from that land of captivity. That's not where you belong. Uh, that was only meant for a 70-year period uh, to teach you guys a lesson. But now there's judgment coming on those people. Flee from those lands. Flee from the land of the north. And the land of the north might be the land of where the Assyrians had taken the, uh, the ten tribes of Israel, or it might be where the invasion is coming from, where, whatever it is. God says, uh, flee those areas. Uh, don't linger. Uh, because you know, the, there were you know, 40 to 50,000 Jews had returned from the captivity. That was a small percentage of the actual people that were still in Babylon, in those areas where they had been taken. Uh, and God uh, doesn't want his people to linger in foreign lands uh, because uh, the safe place for them to be is in Jerusalem, the land that he had given them, the land that they were supposed to be in, the place that they were supposed to be. And that's the safe place to be, uh, right where God wanted them to be. Uh, but if they lingered in the foreign lands where God hadn't given them that land and those weren't their people and that's not where God wanted them to be, they ran the risk uh, of suffering right alongside the heathen who had punishments coming to them. So God, he promises to protect his people uh, uh, when they are where they're supposed to be. But those who linger in the land of the enemy might find themselves suffering the wrath of God along with his enemies. Kind of like Lot. Uh, God warned Lot, get out of Sodom because I'm going to destroy this city. And, and uh, Lot ended up having to leave a whole, you know, he escaped with his life. Uh, his wife didn't make it. Most of his kids didn't make it. None of his possessions made it because he had been living with people who had judgment coming to, him, to them. And so while Lot was spared, much of what he had was not spared. And if he hadn't gotten out of town, he might not have been spared either. And so uh, God, he offers a safe place uh, for those who are where they're supposed to be. But those who dwell where they're not supposed to be run the risk of uh, suffering the punishment alongside the, the wicked heathen. God, he promises to protect those who are where they are supposed to be. And he warns them, he says, flee to Jerusalem. Flee to the place where you're supposed to be at. Uh, and God, his, the third truth we can see is God promises to return his glory to Jerusalem. Uh, verse 10 tells the Jewish people to rejoice because God was promising one day to dwell amongst them once again. Uh, you see, during the period uh, between the first Babylonian captivity and the time when the, the temple was actually destroyed, uh, Ezekiel himself had a vision where he saw the Shekinah glory of God leave the temple uh, where, all, where, it was, where the, uh, the practice, uh, the worship of God had been corrupted with, uh, with, uh, with syncretism and false religions. And, and so the Shekinah glory of God leaves the temple and leaves the city of Jerusalem and the glory of God has been gone from the city. 
You know, that, that city where God's glory was supposed to dwell uh, forever, God leaves. And, and you know, that, this would have excited the people that God's glory is going to one day return to this city. Uh, you know, uh, um, have you ever lost something that you didn't know the value of it when, and then later on you learned the worth of it and you're like, man, I, I can't believe I gave that up. Um, I heard a story uh, uh, once of a man who was mining here in Alaska and he was running a medium-sized sluice box in a stream and he was shoving his material down it and, and it kept getting jammed up with all these, this, uh, these large sticks and bark. And he's like, oh man, I, he, every day he's having to clean out his sluice box with all this stick and bark and he's got this big pile of sticks and bark that's piling up and it's messing up the flow of his sluice box. And, and uh, uh, some of the guys from the neighboring mine come over and they see all the stick and bark there and they're like, what, are you doing anything with that? And he says, no, no, you can have it, just take it. And so they took it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and at the end of the season, he, you know, it, they kept coming back and picking up the sticks and bark and, and hauling it out. And, and as he kept cleaning it out of his sluice box and at the end of the season, he doesn't have quite as much gold as he had been hoping for. And, and he's like, man, I, I, uh, he was rather disappointed about the season. And the guys are, are there, and they're like, well, maybe you can keep the, that pile of ivory if you want it. <laughs> it was mastodon ivory, mammoth ivory, that had been getting stuck in his sluice box. And you can find it all sorts of random places in Alaska. And this guy, you know, all of a sudden he realized he had been throwing away all this ivory uh, because it was uh, clogging up his box of gold that wasn't very profitable. <laughs> and and uh, he, he, you know, I, I can bet he probably felt pretty bad about that mistake, not really knowing what he had and throwing it out of the box and, and giving it away left and right because he didn't want it. Uh, he saw no more value in it than a bunch of old muddy sticks and bark when other people realized what it was. The forefathers of these Jews had essentially done the same thing. They did not realize what they had. They had the original temple. They had the glory of God dwelling amongst them, and, and they wasted it. Uh, they they, they uh, abused it. They abused the worship of God. You know, they had the, the creator of the universe had his glory dwelling there amongst them, and they didn't even realize when it had gone away. Uh, they, they were totally oblivious to what they had. And here their grandchildren are, are mourning the loss of what their grandfathers had wasted because they didn't know what they had. And uh, this would have been a great encouragement because uh, it was, the glory of God wasn't going to be gone forever. The glory of God would come back to Jerusalem one day. And they could take great encouragement from that because now they could fellowship with God himself once again. And they could be in his presence and they could know that he, they have his approval and they would, have, they would be dwelling in the city that would be protected by God himself. And uh, so when, when it comes down to it, God wanted his people to be in their rightful place only there would they be able to experience the joy of God's presence and dwell in the security of his protection because that's where he wanted them to be and that's where he was as well. And so when you are where God wants you to be, you will dwell in his presence, you will be able to experience fellowship with him and you will be able to experience his protection. But if you choose to live in the land of the heathen, uh, the place where God doesn't want you to be, uh, you run the risk of, of suffering right alongside them uh, as they are punished for their lifestyles, for their, uh, for their heathen worship, uh, for the decisions that they make uh, that are opposed to God, uh, that bring God's judgment upon them. And so the application for the Jews was pretty simple. Uh, go back to Jerusalem where you belong. <laughs> Uh, God will only there protect you and fellowship with you. Uh, for us, though, today, uh, where God wants us to be might be a little bit more 
individualistic, right? But <laughs> well, where does God want you to be in your life, though? There are some basic things that you can uh, discern. God wants you to be in church, right? Uh, but, you know, what if you, uh, oh, I can't go to church. I, I need to be working. Uh, you know, if I don't work, I'm not going to have the money I need. Or, or maybe I can't go to church because there's COVID, or I don't want to be a missionary. That's a dangerous uh, thing away from my family. I don't want to listen to God's commands. Uh, they get in the way of what I want to do or uh, what I think will make me happy, and I would be miserable if I, am, uh, if I end up doing what God wants me to do. Well, God tells us here, if you're a Christian, the, the only place where you're going to find true joy, true fellowship with God uh, true uh, safety and security is when you are where God wants you to be, whether that be a missionary, whether that be simply you need to be going to church on a regular basis, or whether that be, uh, you know, you need to have some sort of ministry, or you need to be uh, developing your walk with the Lord uh, by reading uh, his word, or you need to be in prayer more, or whatever God wants you to do, uh, the safest place, the best place for you to possibly be would be where God wants you to be. Otherwise, you run the risk of being punished the same way the heathen would be punished. You will suffer the same consequences as unsaved people when you sin, right? Uh, <laughs> the, that's, that's just the way life is. Just because we're Christians and just because we have the grace of God does not mean that we don't experience negative consequences when we sin. We certainly do. And, and if you aren't where God wants you to be, you're going to suffer consequences for that. You're going to experience the, the, the same sort of punishments that the heathen might experience. Uh, so the best place for you to be is right where God wants you to be. God protects those who are at the center of his will. You know, an interesting thing is that the only disciple of the original 12 that died of natural causes was the only disciple who went to the cross when Jesus died. Uh, John, the Apostle John, uh, was the only disciple that we know of that went to the cross when Jesus died. All the rest ran away. All the rest went into hiding. All the rest were afraid of the consequences if they followed Christ to the cross. But the only one who followed Christ to the cross was the only one who didn't end up dying a martyr's death. That's what all the others had feared. They ran away because they didn't want to be martyrs. And they ended their lives, though much more willingly, as martyrs. Uh, but John was the only one who was not martyred. And the safest place for you to be, the best place for you to be, the place where you're going to experience God's fellowship the most is the place uh, where God wants you to be. When you follow God's will, uh, when you follow his plan, when you do uh, what he commands, when you are right where God wants you to be, you experience the most fellowship, the most security with the Father that you could possibly experience. So wherever you are, run to where God wants you to be. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this uh, good lesson and uh, just a, a way for us to understand that there, there is a benefit to being right where you want us to be. Uh, there is uh, safety, there is fellowship, there is everything that we really want uh, in life, all the things that actually matter, uh, those can only be found when we are with you. And sometimes, Lord, I know that we get, we get afraid. We get afraid of doing your will. We get afraid that if we submit to you that we're going to uh, uh, suffer or uh, not enjoy it. But, Father, I thank you, Lord, that um, the best place to be is right where you want us to be. And you do know what is best for us, and you do plan that for us. Uh, help us, Lord, to trust you and to submit to your will and to follow it wherever it leads us. In Jesus' name, amen.